depot protection facilities have been provided at East Ham Depot on Shed Roads 1 to 11. In this short program, we'll look at the operating procedures in connection with the new depot protection and see how they operate in practice. Let's begin with an incoming train bound for number 1 Shed Road. Having given the driver appropriate instructions, the shunter depresses the warning button which will activate the siren and flashing white lights within the shed on number 1 road, if that road is not under protection. The driver draws the train forward to the post-mounted position light signal situated 20 metres from the shed doors. This signal is operated by the depot protection system and is accompanied by a derailing ramp. If the shed road is under depot protection, the signal will exhibit a danger aspect and the derailing ramp will be in position on the rail head. If the shed road is not under protection, the signal will be off and the derailing ramp will be clear of the rail. Immediately adjacent to this signal is a treadle which when depressed by the first set of wheels will activate the shed warning on this road. It's important to remember that when the shunt signal is off, movement is authorised towards the shed road at caution and only as far as the line is clear. There may be another train already partially occupying this road. The train is authorised to proceed and the treadle activates the warning on number one shed road. The warning takes the form of a continuous siren sounding and white lights flashing above the road and in the pit below. This audible and visual warning will continue for a preset period, at present three minutes, alerting all staff within the shed. Let's look at how depot protection is applied to a shed road. At the shed end, adjacent to the overhead line lock-off box for each road, is the depot protection rotary switch in a yellow lock-off box with a multi-pad lock facility. The lock-off box is identified by the road number. The nominated person opens this box, turns the switch to the on position, and locks the box with the padlock. This action will cause red lights to be lit above the road in question, indicating to all staff that the road is under depot protection. At the same time, the shunt signal outside the shed will be restored to danger and the re-railing ramp will be placed on the rail. Inside the shed, to the left of and adjacent to the shed door, a repeater shunt signal will also exhibit a danger aspect. At the same time, the authorised person will place the not to be moved board on the train and secure by padlock. Staff who are to commence work on the train, which is now under depot protection, will attach their padlocks to the lock-off box, ensuring that protection cannot be removed without their consent. When the overhead line is isolated, the green lights above the road will also be lit. Before we look at the removal of protection, let's examine the light clusters above each road. There are four of these clusters spaced at regular intervals. When the red light is on, the road is under depot protection, but the overhead line is live. No movement may be made under any circumstances. When the green light is on, the overhead line is isolated. When both red and green lights are on, the road is under depot protection and the overhead line is isolated. It's vital that the train crew, when joining a train in the shed at East Ham, 
check the indications given by these lights. Now let's see how depot protection is removed from this road. First, the staff who have been working remove their padlocks from the lock-off box. The nominated person, having assured himself that all staff and equipment are clear, then removes the not-to-be-moved board. Unlocks the lock-off box and turns the rotary switch to the off position. The red lights above the road will go out and the derailing ramp outside the shed will move clear of the rail and the shunt signal and shunt signal repeater will clear to an off indication. The road is now unprotected. However, train crews must understand that this condition does not authorise movement. When a train is required to move, the driver must obtain the authority of the shunter. Before giving this authority, the shunter will depress the push button to activate the warning system. These push buttons are situated at the shed end, next to the lock-off box, and at the outlet end, by the shed door, and in the shunter's cabin. At the time of introduction of depot protection at East Ham, the shed doors are not interlocked within the system circuit. This added protection will be introduced at a later stage. All train crews must be thoroughly familiar with the new depot protection arrangements at East Ham Depot and ensure that the correct procedures are carried out.